Hello lovely people, it's Hila here, Saturday Night Student. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that you're having a fantastic day wherever you are. So today I'm really, really excited because we're doing the browse through for the September 2021 issue. And even better is the fact that it is the Berta Germany issue, which you know is the one that I subscribe to and the one that I prefer. And over the last few months, there's been quite a few problems and I hadn't been able to get them. And then the other uh, day, last week actually, I got four of them with all of the back issues. So I'm very, very happy that things are back on track. And the place where I have my subscription at, which is Newsstand, they have assured me that from now on it's back to normal. So fantastic. So I was really, really happy. And because we're in late um, August at the moment, these are the stars of my garden. So I wanted to share these flowers with you wherever you are in the world. I'm sending you these lovely Japanese anemone flowers that I absolutely love, obviously, because they're pink. And they've got like these lovely yellow stamens over there with this lovely green. And they are so beautiful as cut flowers for flower arrangements because they've got this beautiful long stem along with these little lovely little spherical things. Um, but yes, so Japanese anemones to you out there. Just going to pop those there. So the only problem is they don't quite sit flat, but never mind. And then we've got the line drawing, so we're going to uh, jump straight into it. So we've got the Berda 9 2021 issue. It's bright, it's colorful, it's exciting. And I do think that it does have curb appeal. I think that this is quite attractive even to people who don't sew. Because when my sister saw this cover, she was interested in it before she then realized that, oh, it's just a sewing thing. So I think that it does have great um, curb appeal. So let's see what we have for September. So heads up, I did quite like the preview. That did get me a little bit excited. I thought that they had some good classic styles in there. Not least of which is this trench coat. Now you can never go wrong with a trench coat. I think it is one of, um, it's sort of like the safest thing that you can make if you wanted to make um, a lightweight coat uh, for yourself to wear for layering purposes. And I think that Birds are quite outstanding when it comes to doing trench coats. It is something that they seem to feature quite a lot. And it is absolutely beautiful. I like the interpretation. They haven't used the standard neutral colors because you normally get your Burberry tan camel color or it's like a navy. But this time they've gone with like a really lightweight pastel, no, gray with a floral print. And I think it looks really lovely, especially with the theme that they're going with cottage core. Um, florals. So I thought that that was a lovely start. And then over here we've got some very interesting looking uh, trousers with uh, a skirt fringe at the bottom. That's the way that I see it. It's like trousers but then you attach two little skirts um, at the bottom with them. And for the actual styling they've used a floral um, I think it's a cotton sateen, a stretch sateen fabric which again I think for me, I tend to prefer tapered trousers, but I can see how other people might actually like these uh, style because it certainly is something different, isn't it? And it does have this interesting hip side pockets over here, and it does look like it's got some sort of a fly front. Um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of the styling, though. Normally, I do like uh, print mixing, but there's just something that doesn't work for me with the high girl socks and these florals. It's eh, a little bit off for me, but... I applaud the effort. And then over here we've got um, a children's uh, shorts. Nice baggy shorts and they've got pockets and she looks very comfortable in them. And I think that that's a good thing. And we also have more children's wear with this uh, quilted jacket which looks really, really lovely with the satin bias binding trim. If I were to make this, I would make sure that there's a closure here because it gets cold in the north of England where I live and the children need to be able to uh, zip this up or button this up. But isn't this so adorable, especially with the little sleeve hem detail over here? I thought that that was cute. A little bit impractical, but very cute otherwise. 
and similarly twinning with the mummy is a quilted jacket look with a high collar yoke at the back and from what i can see there is some minimal shaping um, that is achieved i really like these pockets i find that these sorts of pockets are very useful especially the fact that they've got a cover over them it means that whatever you put in there is secure and having just come back from um, a couple of camping trips back to back <laughs> It is so important to be able to secure things in pockets because when you're taking um, your coat off because it's layered, you don't want things to be falling out, which happened to me a couple of times and it really made me wish I had something with flaps. So I'm on the lookout to be making sort of a jacket or a coat, but the pockets for me definitely have to be pockets that you can fasten shut because that makes them more practical, right? Because pockets are everything. <laughs> And then we've got oh the most adorable cute little dress this caught my eye in the preview mostly because okay it's a floral print i will admit and i loved the cute romantic details with the lace trim over on the sleeves there i liked the bracelet length oh is that three quarter okay it's somewhere between a three quarter and a bracelet length and i like the cute little cuffy um uh, puffiness that you get here on the sleeve as well as the trim around the neckline and the pin tuck detail and it's got a waist band pattern piece here which you could have fun with in a contrasting fabric or a lace overlay over it to create the subtle illusion of a belt but i love it i think that this is really really lovely and um, even though i don't think it's that particularly unique or special or particularly different i do really love the way that they've interpreted it here and it makes me want to make it and it also makes me want to clutch a cauliflower as a um you know as an accessory <laughs> And then we've got a very useful for the tall size is a very useful sort of cardigan that you could layer and it's made in a sweater print and it is sorry sweater fabric and i love this sort of things uh, my go-to pattern is the one from uh, birda 11 2020 i think it's number 108 i've made two of them already and i just wear them all the time such a useful pattern to have so i think that this is definitely going to be popular we've got more kids wear here and this is a very simple tent style dress let me tell you my girls were not interested in this particular dress at all i thought it was cute it appealed to my inner child but the girls were just like meh <laughs> but i do think that it is quite um lovely you know like a sunday best sort of dress and then we've got a skirt here, which asymmetrical hem, check, love it, asymmetrical yoke. I think that it is beautiful. This one's a bit of a fabric piggy though, because when I was looking at the instructions, some of the pattern pieces are cut on the bias. And so it would work for, I think, if you're working with like a really lightweight fabric, in this case, they've chosen something that works really well. Not a big fan of doing socks like this and then revealing that it, it, it just doesn't work for me. I mean, these are not, these are ankle socks that are supposed to be covered over by trousers or something like that. But I don't know whether that's just me and I'm showing how old fashioned I am. But this to me, that's not a, a good look. <laughs> Okay, and then over here, we've got another thing that did catch my eye. I love the details on this blouse. I love that it's got like a jabot, a frill down the side of the placket, but it's not overly freely. So I've seen some that have like, you know, like a proper ruffle that goes on there. But this one, I feel like it's really subtle. And then you've got some pin tuck details over here, which give the sleeve some slight volume. And they're finished off with um, elastic which is pretty cool because that means that you can roll it up your sleeve and down and it's got a lovely stand collar and i think that it is gorgeous so this was one of those that i was definitely like oh i would love to make and then for the petite sizes we've got these uh, trousers very simple very straightforward and they've got a side seam zipper you could have fun by doing some contrasting with these uh, pieces or you could actually make them into like shorts and just leave them there you could add like a you know a little frill <laughs> over here but yeah i think that is a good and you can see over there how they've interpreted them in this top um kind of uh, fabric which obviously has got some stretch we've got some more details for that blouse and then we've got that dress that was for the girls but this time it's just been cut into making it into a blouse and i love this this is so adorable except for my girls wouldn't have that because they're just like no we're not going to be twinning with you mummy we we are twins already we don't need to twin with you so never mind 
and then we've got a pair of shorts here and i have to say i'm in two minds about shorts in uh, fall and winter and i think it's because i'm so cold intolerant but i can't really get around this idea of wearing shorts in winter because you yeah you know, i feel like i'd always have to layer so much in order not to get cold so for me it's not a very practical thing but i get it there's some people who probably can get along with shorts in colder weather but for me it's just um it's a big no-no but i do like them for summer i think that this would be great as linen and definitely something that i've pinned down for something that i might make in summer because i have a i've been paying attention to the sort of things that I'm wearing and what sort of things are missing in my wardrobe and I've been creating a list of sort of like gaps in my summer wardrobe and shorts is one of those things that's actually missing in my uh, summer wardrobes because I actually realized that I do like wearing shorts but the ones that I have are really very knocky, <laughs> very old. So I did pin these for something to look at for next spring summer when i'm looking at filling the gaps in my wardrobe but yeah so not so much for winter but for summer yes okay and then this super easy pattern is another one that i really liked and that's because it's got this little curved over shoulder detail that you can finish with a fold over elastic and I'd already planned how I was going to make this using a dash hood fabric. And I'd ordered some fold over elastic that had a frill on the edge, but it doesn't quite work. So I had to go back to the drawing board and figure out how I would do that. Because definitely I want to be able to use a trim on here. And I do. At first when I saw this, I wasn't too sure about it. But after a while... I actually got on board with this. I do like how they've combined it with this sort of romantic freely top. And that's been layered over that. So I, I, I quite like it. So this is another one that I think would be very useful for autumn for me. Because one of the autumn looks that I have is a sort of like this form-fitting dress with leggings and boots. And I would wear a long cardigan over it. Obviously layered um, over a roll neck top as well. So I quite liked that. <laughs> I did. And then we've got some tutorials here for gardening stuff, which is pretty awesome. And this is the sewing lesson. As you can see, this is how you sort of create the fold over stuff. Separately, there is a new look pattern that I made for my twins, which has got a similar sort of style and look. And I think that that's why I like it, actually. Okay, so cover pattern is the trench coat, but it's been cut into a blazer slash jacket. And we've got the inseam pockets over here and a trim has been added just to give it a little bit more of a militaristic vibe as well with the buttons. The buttons, militaristic or nautical vibe. And I think it is gorgeous. And this is, you know... When you have something like this, you don't need to even worry about what else you're wearing because that's just going to be the statement piece um, of the dress. Oh, no, hang on. It just occurred to me that they're doing nautical rather than military. Marine? Yeah, marine nautical. Yeah, but I think it's gorgeous. Okay, and then we've got another dress that really did catch my eye because it's a sheath style dress. And... It's got some little pin tuck details, which I think are sweet, a high round neck. And this to me, even though on the images that are drawn on here, this looks like it would be hitting the natural waist. But when I look at the actual styling image, see if I can get a little bit closer with it. I don't know. Can you see how this looks like an empire? I feel like the natural waist would be over here, but this feels like it's an empire line. And I think that doesn't necessarily come across on the pictures here. This feels to me like it's a bit higher than where the natural waist would be. I may be very wrong, but let me know in the comments down below. Does this look to you like it's the natural waist or is an empire waistline? But that's what we have. And I do think that the color that they used for it the navy is absolutely beautiful and on point the length is very interesting more so because they view she's wearing really interesting type leggings and i don't know i've never come across these before but the hem of the legging goes all the way up over the ankle a little bit towards the sheen and then comes down like that 
That's really, really fascinating. I mean, it kind of throws off the proportions of everything else that she's wearing. But I just thought, wow, these are fascinating. Um, and I'm wondering if this is just sort of like going to be a styling trend that's going to be um, coming out. But yeah, I I really want to see what the bird or sewing community does with this. Because uh, I think it could be interesting. But I, I it's this empire line um, needs a little bit more work okay and then we have a blouse over here with a foul cross front a very easy fit because we've got the sort of like the dolman sleeve the batman sleeve and then we've just got um simple gathered bottom section here okay simple easy lovely and so over here we've got a lot um, to unpack so this is a two-piece we've got a skirt high-waisted uh, skirt over here fantastic and it's got like a great belt little hardware uh, going on and it's cotton satin i think that the tailoring on this is just mwah, it's just a fabulous fabulous tailoring and what do we have to go with it on this side we've got those pair of shorts <laughs> with the sassy photo shoot so i remember when i saw this first on the um on the preview i just thought oh wow you know <laughs> i can remember being 15 years old and trying to be really sassy when i was getting pictures taken and you sort of kind of like do that it sort of reminded me of that somewhat but we've got a two-piece matching top and matching shorts so it's those shorts then they've been made into um it's matching sh uh, set with this jacket which has got some gorgeous uh, details so uh first of all shaping we've got several points where it's shaped so you've got the side seam that goes in and then you've got these two sort of dots that go over there and then you've got this the an illusion of shape with how it creates this very subtle v-neck over here i like the subtle stand collar that you get over there with the dots so this sort of collar i don't know there's just something really flattering about it when it goes just a little bit up it almost like it elongates the body so yeah i think that this is a fantastic one and i cannot wait to see what the birder community does with this one and then over here we've got that blouse again but the one that i liked before but we've removed the frill around the button placket and we've added a tie still kept the pin tucks around the sleeve it is in white and i think it looks elegant and uh, so one of the gaps that i've identified in my summer wardrobe is a white shirt a white button up or button down shirt and I've added this to the list of potential white um, top patterns um, that I can make. So there we go. Let's just move that over there. Okay. And then we've got those trousers again. And admittedly, admittedly, they look a lot better in denim. And this feeds into my theory about indigo denim just being the bee's knees. Like, I think... <laughs> I think you could sew a sack of potatoes, but if you use indigo denim, it would just look amazing. Add some mustard top stitch into it and everybody will just be saying, oh, darling, darling, that looks like a Louis Vuitton or a Gucci or something like that. But there's just something about denim that just makes things look lovely. So with the floral, I thought it was nice. I thought it was okay. But then I saw it in the denim and I was like, yeah, I would wear that. I definitely want to wear that. So I loved that. Okay, and then we've got a dress. A very simple style dress that I'm pretty sure I've seen in the last few months. Actually, this sort of, it sort of reminds me of the 1930s style, the collar, the way that you sort of like have a collar that doesn't go all the way down. I don't know, that was just the vibe that I got off of it. And we've got sort of like a loose fit over here, but it's just given some shaping by the casing that you tie on here. So I think... There was a pattern recently that was quite similar to this, although it didn't have this extra stuff. Um, and that was quite popular and that looked surprisingly good in some of the things that I saw, especially when they added a belt to tie it in at the waist. But yeah, I think that this is going to be quite popular, um, definitely. And then we've got a styling um, section. That's the featured sewing pattern, which is really great. And there's some lovely nautical themed accessories over here nautical themed cosmetics as well this is the designer piece from maison common and it is a blazer slash jacket slash coat slash utility garment um dare i say it, it looks a little bit like a poncho <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, it's got um, uh, some serious hardware going with the zipper over there. Safari style pockets with a flap um, over. So everything for me is pretty great with this until we get to the short sleeves. Um, that kind of really confuses me because for autumn, personally, I'd be looking for longer sleeves. And I know it's quite oversized, so the sleeves are going over here, but... Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what people make of this. And then it's got really deep vents as well. Um, so it might make for a really nice layering piece. And we can see some more detail of it over here. It's been made in a very luxe fabric. Very, very luxe fabric. And you can see it's only half lined. It's not fully lined over there with a really fun and funky lining in between and that's the picture of the designer that came up with it and separately have you ever noticed how designers they always wear like really simple stuff really simple like i really liked this outfit it's like a tool skirt but very very simple in a simple blue t-shirt it's like oh fabulous absolutely fabulous okay and then this coat this coat uh, i thought that this coat was very unique and for me, this coat is the star of this issue because I really like the fact that it's got a hoodie and the hoodie isn't just your usual hoodie. It's a three pattern piece hoodie because I find that those sit on your head a lot better and they protect you from the elements a lot better than the two piece hoodie. And it's got um, a collar on the front here which covers uh, coverage for your neck which provides coverage for your neck as well so as you can see it goes um, up here all the way up here giant pockets and it's got some very subtle shaping because you've got the bust dust over here and for extra added comfort, the sleeves have also got some darts over there. And I sort of learned this in my pattern drafting class with Susie Fur that these make uh, coats a lot more comfortable. So I do think that this has a lot going for it. It's very practical and it is very useful. And you could make it outstanding depending on the choice of fabric that you use, really. Um, if you went with a plaid, you could just really have something that's really stunning in detail. The only thing that I would add personally would be to add the flap over here, just so that whatever I put in there is covered over. But I do think that this is lovely and absolutely, absolutely worth it. I wish that this had been the featured sewing pattern as well. Then that would have made this issue perfect for me okay so we've got that cardigan again this time it's rocked up in an animal print and i gather that animal prints are coming back in fashion or something like that let me know are you going to be jumping onto the animal print trend um i i'm jumping on it but not in the earthy animal print colors i will be jumping on it using hot pinks and fuchsias and blacks <laughs> I don't know if that counts as animal print, but yeah, that, that's the only way that I can do them. Okay, so we've got that dress that I really liked, but this time it's been made into a top. And you can really see how you've got this boat neckline uh, going um, over here. So I think that this is going to be quite a popular, versatile sort of pattern that a lot of people are going to be sewing up. And then we've got um, the dress, that, sorry, the skirt that was an asymmetrical long skirt. It's been just changed into a shorter skirt. Playing with the animal print trend again over there. More animal prints. And this is a pencil skirt with the high waist over there. And I, do you know, the more I see this, the more I like this. I like that. <laughs> uh, and then we've got the jacket, the flattering uh, jacket with all of the darts. I do think that this is quite cute. And I'm pretty sure. I think that this is going to do quite well within the birder community and I cannot wait to see um, what's made out of it. And we have more animal prints here with um, the top, but it's just been lengthened to kind of make it into a slightly extra long uh, shirt dress with curved hems here and a bit of a vent. So you'd be... You could easily wear this sort of style with leggings. And I love that this is the layered look that I go for in winter. So I love when I see this in a magazine because I feel like it, you know, it reinforces and vindicates my decisions to always wear this underneath just about everything that I wear in autumn and in winter. And then we've got the lady in red section, which is absolutely stunning. The photography, the color saturation, everything about it was just 
Mwah. even the shoes the shoe selection in this section is just amazing so first off pair of simple trousers right beautiful trousers and you've got you know the um i don't know what you call this you sort of add stitching down this line and it just gives like a really great classy tailored look i think it's fantastic and then you've got this um We'll start off with the top here. I love this top for all of the details. The shearing over here on the on the sleeve hem is just gorgeously done. And with the little self-covered buttons, they just look absolutely cute. And the way that it's been styled with this skirt. And it's got the asymmetrical godet inserted in there. And I feel like this... I would love to see this in motion. I feel like it would really move beautifully, especially when it's made in a viscose crepe. Absolutely gorgeous. And I, yeah, I, as I said, I loved everything about this particular section, how they realized it and how just the colors were so um, complimentary and rich and so inspiring. I mean, how gorgeous is this green here? It is just such a beautiful green. And I'm sort of like, I would love to get my hands on this green. And they've used a D-ring belt, which, you know, just adds um, more shaping. And as you can see, the dress has got some gathering along the waistband here. And you've got the bust studs and you've got your uh, V neckline. Gorgeous. Love the interpretation. Love the styling with the bag and the boots. So inspiring. And then that tweed jacket. That tweed jacket. Oh my days. I mean, you just stand in ovation for this masterpiece jacket. And then when you look at the detail, look at that raglan sleeve. So you know this is going to be super comfortable. And then you've got how the collar is just slightly rounded so you don't have that sharpness. And then you've got the single gun flap. And you've got the detail with the pocket flaps here. Just so much beauteousness if there's such a word and then there's the color of the tweed itself it's a really beautiful purple lilac fabric beautiful absolutely beautiful i mean i'm just going gaga over it and then we've got that top again and it's so it works so well with this jacket and this for me is a great example of how you can use this um magazine as an idea to get inspiration uh, to get inspiration for winter colors that you may want to use especially if say you're into cups your wardrobes but you want to add a bit of color in there these are fantastic winter colors absolutely fantastic winter colors and mixing and matching prints beautiful they get 10 points 10 points <laughs> and then you've got that skirt again but this time it's in a print and you can see how gorgeous it looks with the movement and the swaying it just works beautifully and then this beautiful bright pink a dress with the godet at the front i imagine this just moving and swishing beautifully adding movement to your outfit yeah i i, I really loved that section with the colors i found it very inspiring I, I found that it caught my imagination and it made me want to dig around my stash to see what i could find to make some of these things come to life you know <laughs> and i think that that's what a sewing magazine does for me and I, and I love that okay so this is what we have with the 9 2021 issue and I do think that it is a decent issue because I do have quite um, a few patterns that I definitely would make I definitely want to make number 101 as part of my sort of like full uniform pattern I would love to make the shorts 113 but that would be more for summer for me make them in a linen I really do like dress number 107, but that's because I really love, love dresses. And I thought that this section was absolutely outstanding. And I do look forward to the time when they draft these patterns to make them available in the other sizes. Because that's the thing that Breda does. Um, they do eventually, especially if they are popular, they will eventually make them available in the other sizes. You just kind of have to be patient um, about it. But yeah, overall, I was very, very happy with this issue. Now it's your turn. Let me know what you're going to be sewing from this issue in the comments box down below. And is there anything that I have missed that you thought was the star of this issue? And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed the video. And if you did, please do give it a big thumbs up down below. 
and also subscribe if you haven't subscribed already because i do put out sewing related content every single week and until i see you next time lovely people happy sewing bye